Hi, I'm Ryan Moody. Come down to Towns for the day. Thought I'd catch up with an old mate of mine, Barry Dionysius from Navcom Electronics. Uh, a question we get asked a lot is, what's the difference between chirp signal, the new chirp range of sounders, and your traditional range of sounders? So, Barry, can you fill us in a little bit about chirp technology? Yeah, sure. Good day. Um, if I could explain, uh, traditionally over the years, the spectrum of frequencies used for soundings or sonar technology vary from uh, a low frequency down around 28 kilohertz if we look at a bandwidth up to about 235 kilohertz. Traditionally a lot of people will be aware of 50 kilohertz at the low end and maybe 200 at the top end. Um, there's spot frequencies. There are also spot frequencies available for other applications but they are spot frequencies. With Chirp, uh, the Chirp technology takes advantage of the full spectrum of frequencies and, and we divide that into three areas, a low, a medium, and a high end. So with Chirp, instead of transmitting on a single frequency, a, a high power pulse of burst of energy going out repetitiously, what we would call pinging, instead of transmitting there at one frequency, they're using a third of that spectrum, so we, at, say at the low end, we can take advantage of 28 to maybe 65, 70 kilohertz, and the way it works is with the lower frequencies, it'll penetrate deeper into the water with a wider beam angle. The target resolution is not as good with lower frequencies. As you go up in the frequency spectrum to the higher end, the resolution and target resolution and discrimination of whatever you're looking at becomes better. Um, as you go up in the spectrum of frequencies, it won't penetrate as deep though. So what Chirp does is take advantage of that piece of spectrum there and it varies the frequency and the amplitude of the signal to get the best of all worlds between depth uh, and at the top end with uh, clarity of discrimination of targets. I've noticed Barry uh, since I've changed over to the Chirp technology that on the traditional sonars when I come across a, a cluster of barra there'd be just like a big red mass and you you had to look really hard to see the dots in the middle to, to see them separated. But on the chirp, it actually individualizes every single fish yes, it does. within that school. Yes. It's quite amazing. It's the beauty of chirp. Yeah. Chirp, yeah. Yep. Cool. Good discrimination. Yep. And chirp actually stands for compressed high intensity radiated pulse. Correct. Excellent. It's actually new technology coming onto the market now. Um, in radar technology that's using the same sort of uh, uh, compressed pulse te uh, technology and but it's used in the microwave frequencies at the top end and it's also giving a lot of clarity with radar target definitions picking birds out on the horizon even at a distance now mate I noticed you're a, um, you're a you've been a Garmin rep for a very long time only since 1990 since the year was uh, it uh, came to fruition uh, and back in those days it wasn't Garmin it was called Pronav Okay. Yeah. And it was uh, started by a, a, a guy called Mr. Min, and uh, he didn't realise at the time that there was also a company who had a copyright on the name Pronav, and and very quickly changed the name to Garmin. The Min is the last part of his name. I understand. I don't know where the Gar came from, but it's been Garmin for 25 years this year. Maybe it was his favourite fish. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Either way, mate, he's done a good job and lately their latest range of electronics are just awesome. Um, I'm using the uh, 1020 at the moment, which I find is an awesome unit for shallow water work. I've only had it out to 35 metres deep being in the Barra boat around Ever Island and those sort of places and I still get great uh, coverage and very great definition. But um, I believe the uh, 74 series, which I haven't had much to do with yet, I believe they are the next step up and they run the one kilowatt transducer? Ryan, they are top shelf. Um, you're currently using a transducer that's only this small and getting amazing results to 35 metres. Mm. Um, there's a range of five transducers that go up to this size and they're getting 80 plus metres in side view and down view and it also supports uh, medium power chirp um, which is a fantastic product all around. Um, these little guys work much better in, in shallow water and estuaries and inshore shoals. This is more a medium and a deep water transducer. The, there's a range, as I say, there's a range of about five transducers now from Garmin that will allow um, the efficiency of any type of, of use of the product. 
these new 7400 series also support the new Pan Optics product. This is a forward looking or forward scan Pan Optics transducer. It can generate here a 3D picture of the bottom showing depth and profile and different color um, angles. You can also change, that's a side on 3D. You can also change it to side elevation and also to a plan elevation. And so we can look overhead as well. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? As you can see, it's scanning plus and minus 30 degrees on the horizon from a midship, and it's also scanning down at the same time. Amazing stuff. Mate, I can't wait to put one in my boat, actually, because uh, I imagine they'd be an awesome unit for finding wonky holes and bits and pieces out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, fantastic. You can see they've got different coloured layers here coming down to the graticules for the, the depth scaling on the, on the side on the left here. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a scaling of distance out from the bottom. So you can see where the... I bumped that and it stopped. Um, we can't we can't see here at the moment there's some shading change here mm -hmm. but as you come down in, in depth the shading will will change depending on the depth you're in and we, we actually did a test last week a demonstration for the port of Townsville they're dredging around the main wharf areas they're trying to go down an extra three meters and we demonstrated this live um, and we could see whether they've been dredging and you can see the scallop change color in the in the bottom and where it rose up, the colour changed, and they knew that they had to go out with their bucket dredge further on their boom and keep digging and then eventually move their dumb barge forward to keep uh, excavating the bottom. It's amazing technology. Changes those sort of things for the dredges and everything, doesn't it? It's amazing. I mean, these guys have been using a lead line, seriously using a lead line, to run around with dinghies to do their bottom profiling. Now, this has just changed their whole world. And they can do it all from the armchair. Yeah, exactly. Um, amazing. We can uh, Wi-Fi that. Yep. Uh, well, in this instance, uh, I have an order from them. We're going to Wi-Fi from that. It, it already supports Wi-Fi. Wi It'll Wi-Fi and emulate that screen as well as full control of that screen back to an iPad or an Android tablet. So the operator is in a crane on this dumb barge with a boom and it's skewing. So we couldn't get a cable into that. Into that, um, uh, the operator's um, compartment. Mm -hmm. So we. We've been able to run with a Wi-Fi back to a tablet, so the electronics is external, yep. and you can control it completely externally with a Wi-Fi iPad or an Android tablet. Amazing stuff. So I'll tell you what, if you'll, Garmin Electronics have come a long way, they've got some really great toys at the moment, that's all I use. If you want to know more about um, anything to do with Garmin or frequencies, no matter what it is, this is the man, Barry Denisius, Navcom Electronics on ba uh, Boundary Street in South Townsville. Um, come over, have a chat to Barry, and uh, he'll point you in the right direction. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks. And Good we'll see you uh, again, buddy. Yeah, mate, you too. We'll catch up another time. Great. Cheers. Thank you.